the payer's perspective here, should transplant still be part of the standard of care or should it be determined well, <laughs> based on MRD or yeah. what's your well, thinking? Well, I suppose uh, that's a great question. Uh, it certainly isn't addressed in the NCC and guidelines today. Um, but based on this Forte trial, I look at that and say, you know, these patients who got a transplant did no better unless they were at high risk um, than patients who continued triple therapy. And, and so why would we expose a patient to the toxicities uh, of an, or an autologous transplant um, uh, compared to continuing therapy? And I think not only is that um, the, the patient-friendly thing to do if there's no difference in the outcomes, but if it's also a lower cost to the patient and to the system, uh, I think those are the questions that we need to ask. And if, and if our our, if our staging systems or our, our risk prediction systems aren't adequate today, then we need to focus on how do we better predict who's gonna be a long-term responder without the need for transplant. So I look at this study and say, not every patient needs to have a transplant, even though they may be transplant eligible. So John, you are bringing up the, the issue of toxicity. So yeah. if we go back and look at these early studies that were done back in the 80s uh, and look in the 90s, I think there are close to 10 trials that have evaluated the uh, high dose malfalan in the context of multiple myeloma. Uh, at that time, the induction therapy was quite inferior compared to today. So we don't really have any benefit data that's solid from a lot, uh, large number of studies in the current era. That's really lacking. So the the, the perspective that transplant really is very useful for the most part in the literature, literature comes from older studies. Right. When it comes to the toxicity profile, uh, the uh, immediate uh, impact on the cytopenias is obvious and patients have like diarrhea, fatigue sure. and all those things. There's much less information on the long-term toxicities because patients used to unfortunately have a shorter lifespan in the past. So if you look today, the average patient, according to SEER, who is uh, around 50 or so, we know other comorbidities, has probably 10 to maybe 20 year projected overall survival. So if you give melphalan and you follow someone over time, what's gonna happen? What's the risk for AML, MDS? And there was actually a study looking mm -hmm. into available data published in the fall of 2018 from the CEI BMTR registry. And they compared it to the general population and they looked at the rate of AML and MDS in these transplanted patients from the registry. Yeah. And then they use SEER as the comparison uh, also. And what they show is that the added uh, risk from transplant is about 50 times. So 50 times higher risk of having AML, MDS at 10 years of follow-up. Wow. You could criticize and say that 50 times times what? That the risk is low, it's only one or two percent or something like that. So yeah. the counter argument would be that if you don't have good therapies, the disease is more dangerous than these low absolute risk, yeah. but still the risk magnitude is quite high. And if we add 10 more years of follow-up, uh, yeah. where are we gonna land? These are important perspectives. Yeah. So I think your point is that, um, the, your initial point was that uh, the, the paradigm for treating um, transplant eligible patients hasn't changed even though the, the, uh, the backbone therapies and induction therapies have. And, and we really need to understand uh, what the role of transplant, let alone tandem transplant, is in these patients who we get to uh, MRD negativity at initial treatment for the newly diagnosed patient. Uh, because if we're exposing patients to uh, a single transplant or multiple transplants um, without evidence of long-term benefit, or at least um, uh, in terms of overall survival, then uh, uh, we're, we're actually likely causing harm. There was a study by uh, Stottmeyer uh, published this year in Journal of Clinical Oncology that looked at, um, um, I think it was, uh, 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 transplant followed by uh, uh, another transplant versus triple therapy versus uh, monotherapy with lenalidomide and showed no difference in, in the survival and progression-free survival. And you look at that study and look at the cost of those different regimens and say, if we're not, if we're not improving survival and improving patient quality of life, then we're actually devaluing care because we're paying more for the same outcome.